Yes, right now that as we prepare yes. to disperse and to disseminate yes. the message that you have yes. poured into us for your people, that you administer grace to every hearer, yes. and that you allow us here live today and those that are joining us online to be the better for coming, no longer yes. the same. We we'll ask these blessings and many more. Listen, we call out the name of Deacon James Brown today in the landscape of Macedonia. We call out the name of Sister Lily today as she uh, recuperates right now from Macedonia. We call out the names and we ask for you to remember once again all those who are in need of your provision. We trust you and we don't doubt you and we ask these blessings and many more in that great name. We show you also what I'm going to share. In Christ's name we pray. Let's say amen. You may take your seats. You may be seated. Wow. We thank the Most High for his minstrels and the praise and worship leader, Sister India Man. We bless all of you all who are here today, the fellowship, those that are visiting with us for the first time, welcome. And we're just grateful. Shabbat Shalom, everybody. Blessed, peaceful day of rest, the Saturday, Sabbath. We're grateful. For each and every one of you all, those who have uh, observed and progressed through the Hanukkah season, we pray that that was a blessing for you. And we're not going to be before you long. There's a lot going on, but as we always state, we're never going to fall short of placing the will of the Most High first and sharing with His people what He's shared for us so that we can be empowered. Let's not get it twisted today. This is not conventional church. Right. We come together in a corporate sense as has become custom, uh, originally established after Christian persecution ceased or became uh, less pronounced in about the third century common era or what people call A.D. and on the Menai. Gregorian calendar of the Catholic Church, which means in the year of our Lord. And from the corporate establishment of the Catholic Church, which is the origin of all organized Judaic uh, Christian religion until the very inception of where we are now with exactly the truth we gather because this is a tree in our station. This is a place where you can come together. And where, just like in the first four chapters of Acts, we can love up on one another, we can strengthen one another, we can plug in, as it were, because out there is where the true harvest is, out there is where true ministry is, and let's not get it twisted. The ecclesia, what people call the church now, this is exactly the truth, we're educating with uh, faith and, and ministry. And right here in your heart is where what we call the church is where his ecclesia is. No, you're not, that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. A lot of times people feel like that when they become disenchanted with their faith fellowship and their collective, then they have become disenchanted with the Father. But all you need to do is to look on the inside because that's where his Holy Spirit seeks to dwell. It doesn't seem to dwell within these walls. They may be nice walls, they may be decorative walls, but he seeks to dwell in each and every one of us. Amen. Amen. So we're not going to prolong the time. This one may be a little brief this morning. We've got uh, a lot that we have to prepare to do. Got to rehearse because people are in the season of celebration and there's all kind of programs and uh, we are involved because once again the harvest is out there so we're involved in several ministries and we must prepare but boy do we have an encouragement for you today. Boy do we have a word that should pick you up and that should strengthen you today. Boy do we have a word that turns the light on today. And if there's no other or greater time than this time of year boy do we need a light. Hello somebody. There may be plenty of jingles going on and there may be 
plenty of cash registers that are ringing stuff up, but I know for certain because I've been counseling for the better part of 40 years, oftentimes these times that we call holiday times or holy day times, my little man, is some of the times that people reflect the greatest on the struggles that they're having. Yeah. Those are some of the times and uh, where it's the most pronounced that if you've been alone all year, there's no other time that seems lonelier in many regards <laughs> than this time because where a lot of people are taking the highways and the byways, going to be amongst people and friends and family when you are alone, man, it becomes pronounced more so than ever before. I'm not trying to mess with y'all that's alone. That today you're going to find out that there's a reason, quite possibly and plausibly, why you're alone. But nevertheless, when you're alone, it becomes more pronounced in this day and time. And some people are surrounded round about with family, and that doesn't mean that you're not alone. You're right, you're right, you're right. Sometimes you can be in a room full of people and feel lonelier than you've ever before. But we've got a word that we're going to speak in your hearing. We're going to invite you right at this time to join us in the Greek scriptures, more commonly known as the New Testament, where we're going to derive the foundational basis for our text from the book or the letter of Paul the Apostle to the Romans, chapter 8. If you would join me there, I'll be blessed to fly. Romans 8, we're going to read in your hearing verses 28 through 30. This morning, we're going to be reading from the New Living Translation. Thank you. Holy Spirit got me good. We were teasing about the New Living Translation on Wednesday in the Bible study, and now just about the whole text we're going to derive from here because it just makes it the most simple to understand in these passages. Amen. So, if you have the capability, join us in the New Living Translation of the English translation of these verses. Herein is the reading of the Holy Writ, and it reads as thus, beloved Romans chapter 8 to 28 through. Third. Scripture states, and we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God the most high God. The Hebrews, of course, and are called according to his purpose for them. The King James Version says that all things work together for the good of those that love the Lord are the call according to his purpose. Hello, someone. Yeah, yeah. 29, for God knew his people in advance, and he chose them to become like his son, so that his son would be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And having chosen them, he called them to come to him. And having called them, he gave them right standing with himself. And having given them right standing, he gave them his glory. What a powerful promise this morning. Amen. Amen. May the Most High add a blessing to the reading of the Holy Writ. Beloved, for the time this morning in duration that is allowed to me to pour out to you today title of our text is simply titled Strategic. Now, for those of you all who are able to fellowship with us, and what a blessed and powerful fellowship it is every Wednesday in person when we get together for Exacting Insight into the Word Wednesday Bible study and question and answer, you will recall that we sort of closed the program, Cousin Vanessa Lady Joy on Wednesday talking about how the most high God of the Hebrews that we serve is actually a strategic father. Yes, now we're going to delve a little bit more into that further along in our text. But I have one very clear and distinct message to share with every elect member of the Christ body this morning. As we prepare to close this year, Cousin Joe, and face an unsure future going into 2024. What do you mean unsure? We're facing the expansion of artificial intelligence. Hello, somebody. 
We don't know how things are going to end in Israel and in the Gaza Strip with their warfare with Hamas. We don't know whether Russia is going to finally in stride overcome Ukraine or whether they're going to be able to lift up the stand. And all I know is that the country says and is acting like it can't find no more money to assist Zelensky and them folks, so we're going to have to pray. But I can tell you this much. But as we face the close of one year and as we come into the introduction of a brand new year. There's one thing and one distinct message that I want to make clear. All those elected by the Most High, meaning all those that are chosen, is there anybody chosen here today? You better know that you're chosen. You better, I mean, the Bible says that many are called, but few are chosen. That means everybody get the invitation, but everybody don't show up. You better show up today. You better have confidence. I shouldn't have to tell digressing, but I shouldn't have to tell you you're chosen. You need to know it. Hello, somebody. If you're going to have a lack of esteeming of yourself in anything, don't let it be in that. You need to declare to yourself today, I am elected by the Most High. So all those elected by the Most High are exactly, listen, y'all was with me until we say this. But hang in there because we're going somewhere with this. Don't leave if you can help it. All those that are elected by the Most High are exactly where they're supposed to be. At this particular moment, at this particular time, and there's no need for you to be confused. I didn't think a whole lot of people was going to see it. No. Let me continue with the text. Now, that may seem close to impossible for some folks, even you all joining us online, even those of you all who are going to peruse this later at your own convenience online. It may seem close to impossible for some folks based on the circumstances you're currently in, or even in the sheer power that some may appear to be facing, to believe that you are in the right place. Some of y'all are in trouble. Y'all look good. And praise the Most High that we don't look like some of us what we've been through. Yeah. But you know well. you're going through some particular and unique challenges right now at this moment. And you go in your heart. And if you need to be honest, I'm not trying to ask anybody to put on any facades today. But sincerely in your heart, you may not want to accept that right here in this place where I'm struggling in this particular area is where I'm supposed to be. Lord have mercy. If I ever needed the Lord before and somebody else to preach, I need it now. His daughter ushered us in the praise and worship. He did all right coming behind him, but now this seems like it's crazy. Lord, Holy Ghost, I need another message. I don't want to be here. How can the so-called man of the Most High declare that I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be? It may seem close to impossible for some folks to accept that. However, I'm here to encourage you. Stop asking everybody around you what they think about your situation. Right, right, they're right, absolutely. How much does it matter for us to get a consultation? How much does it matter for us to seek out confirmation by it? Yeah, girl, he did do you wrong. He's dirty and you're and you better off. Yeah, man, you should have dropped her a long time ago. We need to stop asking other folks that don't understand our purpose what they think about our purpose. Right, right. That was a word for somebody yeah, today. Yeah. I want to encourage you to stop asking everybody around what they think about your situation and start listening, listen to the Holy Spirit and believing in the precedent set forth in his word. Oh, now we're going somewhere, Sister Griffin, because as we often remark here at Exactly Truth Ministries, we live through the word. We don't live dogmatically. We don't just live based upon opinion or how we want to perceive the word in a contemporary sense. A lot of times we bastardize the word rhema and take it out of context, out of scripture, so that it can mean however we want to praise or worship. But I'm telling you, there's a precedent in the word that proves and is established firmly that he is a strategic father and that we need to take comfort in the fact that clearly I'm going, I, I don't have to put y'all on the spot Mr. Chris, I don't have to pick on nobody I'll use myself for an example there's clearly times where I didn't know back from front that he knew exactly what he was doing somebody know what I'm talking about 
is how big conveniently we forget that once, Minister Davis, we overcome one thing and we enter and step into another, we conveniently forget that we just overcame the last thing. I know everybody don't forget. Some of y'all have an anointed memory in Christ that is flawless. I'm not talking to you. I'm talking Lord, about the rest of us that seem to struggle. Praise the most high for my spiritual <laughs> son, Aaron. Amen. Amen. If you're surrounded and compassed round about by your enemies, you need to trust in the most high because if he elected you, for his purpose, then you're more than likely standing, for example, because we live through the word here, in a Jehoshaphat position. Now, son Aaron knows what I'm talking about. When you go to talking about the Jehoshaphat position, anybody that's got an inkling of charisma in them, I'm telling you, y'all could have just came from somebody telling you you're not getting an income tax return this year. And that charisma, that fire that's in the belly of those of us that believe in the charismatic move of the Holy Ghost, still something wants to jump up and run. My Lord, a Jehoshaphat position. What are you talking about? Jehoshaphat position sounds good in church until you got to implement it in your daily walk. What does that mean? Meaning according to 2 Chronicles chapter 20, the battle that you appear to be facing is not yours, it's the Lord's. See, one of the things that Minister Jordan increasing and stretching out the time of our suffering is that instead of us seeing Mama Womack that we're in a Jehoshaphat position for him to act on our accord, we act on our own accord and then we create you're a right. wilderness experience of you're Israel right. position. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Where a couple of weeks journey takes you 40 years because Come you can't now. seem to get out of your own way and stop messing with stuff. You ever been, I'm not aggressive because I'm just going to be me because some of y'all, this is already encouraging and excited to be with y'all. People kind of see it like I'm not going to let that affect me. I've been preaching since I was seven, so we're going to continue on. Let me digress. Anybody ever been in a situation in their life where you was arguing with somebody and it was clear you just needed to shut up? <laughs> I'm not looking for nobody to be honest today. I'll be honest with you. You've never been in a... You're clearly losing the debate. <laughs> you're digging a bigger hole for yourself. And you can see your own self shrinking. And you can feel your own self drowning. And that last hot take that you tried to give to your adversary, it sounded something like this. I don't know, it was dark because you already began to take all water in your lungs. But no... Instead of having the term determination to let the Lord fight your battle, you determine that I'm going to fight this That's battle. Right. I'm going right. to win. If I die, I'm going to die right. telling this person what I think about That's them. Right. Right. Oh, no. We today, at the close of 2023, need to abandon the Israelite wilderness position that has hung us for so long in our life. And we need to recognize that because he's a strategic father, that there's a reason and a purpose for why we're even in the argument that we're in right now. Wow. 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 And that we need to adopt the word that says we need to be quick to hear and slow to speak in all wow. measures. Come on. Come on. Come on. So lower your weapons today. They won't work in this battle that you're in because they will be made obsolete in the apparent fight you're facing which is not yours, it's the Lord's. Wow. Good luck trying to fight the supernatural battle that only he can take up on your behalf. That's one of the reasons why so many of us, once again, for redundancy's sake, we're going to move on, are drowning in our circumstances because you swing and using up all your energy. And guess what your energy should be? Your energy should be preserved for when you need to walk into the promised land that he promised you, that he made a way for, that he had already opened up the door and laid provision in, and he didn't need your help, he just needs your obedience. Well, well. Mm -hmm. Make no sense for us walking into the promised land and it seemed like we've been on a treadmill for 77 weeks. <laughs> we should be blessing and worshiping the Most High. Instead, we barely get to the promised land, came into the land, and Joe, we exhausted. Right, right. Right. Because you're trying to fight a fight that's not yours to fight. 
Heavenly Father is allowing us to know that the first principle that we need to understand is that even if your plight seems like it's bleak today, it's an excellent chance that if you're elected, now I'm not talking to some of y'all that are children of condition. I don't believe I'm talking to children of condition today. Am I talking to anybody that's cursed like Judas? No, I didn't think so. So for those of us that were elect, Scripture says we just read that all things work together for the good. Now some of y'all want to run until we review all things. That means you're firing. I can't get no help in here to that. That means that diagnosis that did not seem like it was that pleasant. When you're elect, yeah. Yeah. even bad news works together. Well, well all right, my God. Y'all heard me correct some of y'all eyes wide. That, that, for those that are elect, all things, y'all stop making up what you want to hear. For some reason, we read all things, but in some of y'all ears, it sound like a oh, oh, wonderful thing. <laughs> That's what we opened up with. That's what I'm going to stand on. So how do I believe that when I'm surrounded round about by my enemies? When everybody I thought was my girlfriend and was my guys, I thought that was my man, and he's gonna fool around and try to get on my way. I'm telling you right now, it's a Jehoshaphat position that you're in. We pray and wasting our prayers, cursing our enemies. Thank you for that reaction, Mr. Prince. More people should have resounded with them. The reason why we got quiet is because some of y'all know this week you was cursing the enemies. Get your God punish them! They're already punished. They had no business messing with the anointed of the most high. You know the scripture. We give you the word today. Scripture says, touch not my anointed. Y'all stop chasing after people that would dare to put their hands and to put their mouths and their circumstances in and on the position of the people that the most high called. Wow. I call wow. me a The person that worshiped before y'all this morning, she called me a base. She said, Daddy, did you just hear the news? I said, no, I ain't hear the news. I'm trying to find a sandwich. <laughs> She said that the Turkish man, I believe, was speaking against Israel. Mm -hmm. We can have all kind of choice feelings about Israel. That ain't got nothing to do with the fact that he chose them. Right. And he right. already laid in scripture and said what was going to happen to yes. Israel if they were disobedient. Yes. And you know what? So much of what's happening in Israel is exactly what he said in his word. Right. But you know what he said at the end? He said that I'm going to restore them. Yes. So much to the degree yes. that every gate of every city of, of the city of New Jerusalem Every entry point in every day is going to be named after these 12 prophets. Yes. Yes. He played a long game. He don't play a short game like right. us and Satan. Right. 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 Some of y'all, you need to take Luther out of your worship spirit. <laughs> now, don't get me wrong. We ain't one of them ministries that just ain't got no natural sense. Ain't nobody trying to make no babies to share the seeds. I don't think. <laughs> I'm going to be playing here today. This is exactly the truth. Listen, there's a purpose for Luther. I said it. There's a purpose for Luther. I remember my mama. That's kinky. Y'all you know, you know. Let me move on before I get something on the I don't think y'all listening. I remember mama while y'all are trying to move into it. There's a purpose for Luther. But having said that, Luther, I.T. Bow, don't necessarily belong in your inner sanctum worship. I speak to myself sometimes, and I wonder why. You shouldn't be wondering nothing. He has a plan for you. He has a purpose for you. And we're sitting up trying to execute judgment on our enemies when Scripture said they already cursed from the beginning. Don't touch my anointing. Yes. Yes. Do my messengers no harm. You're wasting your time. If you're a God, prove it to me by causing my cousin to trip. Oh, y'all thought I was talking about somebody on the job. <laughs> Scripture says that the enemy and your greatest enemy will be members of your own household. Right. All right, let me go on with the example. I almost lost it. So she said the Turkish politician, the spokesperson, was on the television saying that we are going to trample on Israel. In our lifetime, we are going to see it destroyed and cast into hell. He went off the camera, according to what I've been told, I'm about, and dropped dead. So what is your point? I'm not glad that the man dropped dead. I'm just telling you that the Bible is true. Touch not my anointing. We don't have a say in who is oiled wow. for the purpose of what I'm 
I'm not trying to make this message longer than what it's supposed to be, but I'm still in this digression. Would y'all bear with me a few more moments? A lot of times we try to alter right. or try to fool with who the Lord called. Right. That's why some of y'all question yourself now. I told y'all in the first principle, stop asking everybody about your situation. Right. They're not going to give you good advice because the devil will get in folk and tell you that you ain't anointed. You need to think twice about when you know the Father anointed you. Wow. Wow. Which is why you don't need to ask any of the children and accuser of the brother and what they think. Mm -hmm. Do you think I'm saved? What do you think? <laughs> I better move on. You're right. Mm -hmm. Drop dead. Israel's going to die and he died. Who won? So lower those weapons. You're not going to need them. They're obsolete in this battle that you're in right now. The Most High spoke through his message of Moses to the children of Israel something similar in the Hebrew book of Exodus, chapter 14. When Pharaoh of Egypt finally capitulated to the will of the I Am and released the children of Israel from captivity and then changed his mind. Don't that sound like us in the flesh? Via witnessing their departure from Egypt. We get ready to celebrate we, it's actually okay, Lady Joy, for us to invite our friends over because they finally made a good decision and put their life and stopped tormenting themselves and got out of that toxic relationship. And then when they didn't show up, we wanted to make sure that they was okay. This is fictitious, by the way. We wanted to make sure that they got the directions right because, listen, we got a small circle and everybody ain't invited over. So we wanted to make sure, Mark, they didn't they, they, they get a bit, you know, if you're driving to the Davis's house and you're coming past the high school, you know, if you drive too fast, you go right past y'all exit. Come to find out, that ain't what happened, Joe and Vanessa. When we looked around, where you at? Mm -hmm. I'm with Samson. Uh -huh. <laughs> Samson. Now, in your situation, Samson cut your hair. <laughs> Everybody didn't think that was funny. <laughs> yeah, in, in your situation, Samson cut your hair and you lost your power. <laughs> we prayed, we cried, we saw the Lord. You back with Samson? How is that even possible? God, I thought you was through. We just like Pharaoh of Egypt. Wait a minute, he just lost his firstborn. And then, Joe, he got to thinking about losing his firstborn. I ain't letting them, I almost said the wrong thing. I almost said the N word. I ain't letting them go. He sent out the seals from Egypt. After the children of Israel. Y'all know we'll change our mind in a second on what the Holy Ghost said. Oh, Lord. Come on. Now, past, I thought you said this was encouraging. It is encouraging. He's a strategic most high. All of this energy that you exert, you can save it now because you don't have to fight this battle. Right. It's not yours. It's the right. Lord. All of this things will be about negative stuff, but y'all hang in there with me. Let me do a time check. All right, I got a few more minutes. Yes, Lord. Release the children of Israel from captivity, Pharaoh that is, and change his mind, be a witness in their departure from Egypt. They sure don't look good from the back. <laughs> Your enemy always gonna hate on you from the back. Because you're walking away from that trouble that they're trying to keep you in. In verse 13 of Exodus chapter 14, it states, And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Listen which he will show to you today. For the Egyptians whom ye have seen today, ye shall see them again no more forever. To think that he got you so much so that the things that are ill in you right now, if you just allow it to be placed in the master's hand, wow. there is actually a point of your suffering with who you're suffering with. Don't let the devil tell you that it's infinite. It's not. It has an end to it. Right. 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 When you allow the Father to do what the Father does. Yeah. Yeah. Then the Most High allowed the waters of the Reed Sea, according to the original Hebrew text, to swallow up the pursuing army of Egypt only after first allowing passage to safety on the other side of the river for his chosen people. You may need to be patient. Uh -oh. You may need to rely more greatly and trust in the Lord. Uh -oh. 
But your fighting would be pointless today, beloved, because despite how you may sometimes feel, I'm going to repeat it. You're exactly where you're supposed to be and where you need to be at this hour. And there's even purpose for your suffering. I'm not done. It's because some of y'all ain't convinced. Somebody today is thinking, well, what about me? I'm not trapped. I'm not surrounded by a radius of my enemies. Well, bless your heart. No, that's not my circumstance. I'm not saying that I'm not suffering on that behalf and on that account, Pastor. What I'm saying is I'm facing a singular, uniquely daunting circumstance that I have no idea how to overcome. You've done everything you can think of and within your means to change the impending outcome of what you're facing, beloved, and nothing seems to change about your predicament. Is the message still applicable there? I recognize the Holy Spirit has a wide blanket and comforter to cover all these circumstances where everybody is not being ganged up on, my woman. Some people are facing an enemy when they're all alone that people that's praying for them can't necessarily see. Y'all don't have to say amen. I hear it in your heart. I hear it in the spirit of your mind. Is the message still applicable to those circumstances? You even prayed. Turned away your plate on an occasion and fasted, but still no response. You worried, exemplified fear, even got angry, became frustrated, stressed out. You've thrown everything you had at the object blocking your progress and deliverance. It still won't move. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't have to give it away today. Ain't nobody trying to put you on the spot. I'm praying for you. Like the Holy Spirit is allowing pastor to discern and understand that this is a unique situation that so many of us are in today. Whether it's a health crisis or whether it's a financial crisis or whether it's a relationship crisis, you've done everything in your power and you can't seem to move it. I don't think you've done everything in your power, though. Question is, how is a single individual supposed to relocate what appears to be an entire mountain, Sister Griffin, blocking their path with seemingly no way around it? I told you all we've been through the word. Well, beloved, let me ask you a question. Did you try speaking to me? Hmm. <laughs> okay. Ain't nobody tried that for me. I told y'all, Aaron. Watch out, son. If you just feel a run in, you don't worry about these people. <laughs> Us charismatic, sometimes we just got to, you know, let forth that energy sometimes. Right. Telling y'all if we was in the great revival, folk wouldn't be sitting on me. I'm going to ask the question again for some of y'all that have wax in your ears. You did everything. I mean, you went to council. I mean, you saved money and then you spent money. You threw money at the problem. You complained to other folks. You tried to change locations, but did you speak to me? Wow. Wow. Uh, you fought it. You got the bruises and the cuts to even prove it. You didn't think that a mountain had a gun to shoot back at you. You shot it and still didn't move. But I want to ask you a question. All the stuff that we're naming, Minister Billy, ain't got nothing to do with scripture because Christ said, speak to it. Yes, yeah. my God. <laughs> my God. Did you try speaking to it? <laughs> no, I invited five people that I felt like was friends over, but all of them was named the name of the people that uh, was ancestors to the people that gathered with Job when he got sick, and we couldn't move it. Send them home and do something that's in Scripture. Did you try talking to it? Let me digress for another moment. One of the reasons why we can't overcome a lot of the battles that our prior words and the positions that they put us in, because what we do is we stop talking. Okay. Oh, oh, oh. Why the mountain always got to be a bill that's due? How sometimes the mountain is, I can't bring myself to say I'm sorry well, when I'm guilty. Right. Sometimes that's all that so I wonder yeah. is anybody no, interested on. in real yeah. teaching today? Yeah. Sometimes that's all it takes is to move the mountain, beloved, is for you to have a little bit of accountability. Yeah, I was wrong. All of a sudden, y'all on vacation and making love again. That's all you needed to say. No, I'm going to hold out. And I'm going to let the Lord, now don't confuse the word. Don't try to use and confuse what was said earlier. I'm going to let the Lord fight this battle with your stubborn ignorance. Right, right, right. Say I'm sorry so you can heal. 
Right. Did you try speaking to it? Sometimes you try to throw money at it. Sometimes all a person wants, sometimes I use myself for example again, all Joey wanted was an apology. I tried to buy a massage and money. I got bruises. <laughs> oh, so you know, yo, I know still, I'll take it. So you <laughs> you like, I done went and spent this hard earned money, girl, and, and, and got you one of them, them bags with the logos on it. You ought to be happy. Care, all I'm going to do is carry my brokenness in this bag. Wow, 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 wow. The bag you brought me is just giving me room to store how you hurt me. Wow. Did you try speaking to the problem? Because sometimes your mountain. And this is what the Holy Spirit understood through Christ. Sometimes conventional warfare don't work on that mountain that's in front of you. Something unconventional, something that you wouldn't expect, something that's within your hands. Like the right words. Holy Ghost, I'm almost done. Are y'all hanging there with me? <sighs> yeah, did you try speaking to it? As ridiculous as that may seem to be in real time and in actuality, our most high creator appears to specialize in things that seem and appear to be impossible. Like speaking to the whole Himalayan mountain and it move out of your way so that you were free to go. In the Gospel of Mark chapter 11 verses 20 through, 22 through 24 it states, And Jesus answering saith unto them, Have faith in God. For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he has said shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he said. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, when ye pray, I'm talking to y'all online as well, believe that ye receive them and ye shall have them. Some of y'all pray, bind the devil, sweat, cry, got even the babies crying. Don't worry, the babies, they don't have understanding. They just cry because you know. Everybody in the house seems like they're in worship, Mama Womack. And then as soon as you get done, as soon as you exemplify that example before the, before the next generation that you were trying to teach the canvas of faith, then y'all call the emergency wagon and rush the doctor. Now y'all didn't say nothing because y'all feel like, is there something wrong with calling, calling the ambulance? The only thing that's wrong with calling the ambulance is that you should have not wasted all that time hollering and screaming and you should have called them because the more time that the paramedic got to work with your nine faith behind, the better off you're going to be. No, I'm not talking to Jehovah's Witnesses. Don't take no blood. You better try to get a transfusion if all your blood is leaking out of your body. They don't even interpret that scripture right. It's talking about eating raw meat without being prepared kosher. And I told y'all we love Jesse. I can't take no blood. Let the baby die. You don't want to pay for school. That's what you ain't fooling nobody. I said it. Some of these people have children and then regret it. Ain't nothing like a convenient. Oh. Yeah, you sick, you bleed now. We can't help you. Don't give them no blood. Wow. That's good. Yeah, that's about a half million dollars by, between the ages of one and 18 and all that you ain't got to worry about no more. Kind of crazy messages. I'm not looking for y'all to say amen and everything like that. I'm just looking to tell the truth and go somewhere and sit down so that I can go home. <laughs> now, I am going to stand, not this week, since the door 12 toes down. Ten toes down. I, got, I can count this week. I'm going to stand ten toes down on the point that we just made and say, yeah, if you going to pray, don't worry. And if you're going to worry, don't pray. Right. Right. Because we're teaching the wrong example to the next generation of believers yeah. when we act a fool and then we still go and spoil that devil that don't need spoil. Right. Right. Y'all stop hollering in y'all house at these kids. And all you're going to do is give them the gray eyes and the candy anyway. <laughs> I don't care if y'all don't like me today. I'm going to teach anyhow. <laughs> if you're going to pray, don't worry. If you're going to worry, don't pray. Right. I said to man to sit down. I don't think you could have been nobody. You've got a Samantha in your family. I mean, I mean it this time. I mean it the hundredth time. I mean it the one thousand time that I said that you better sit down. And you're going to give them. No! 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 How anybody that young get that much authority? <laughs> no! No! No, 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 no. <laughs> they know overpower. Yo, you gonna sit out. Well, you go 
do it, you don't do the whole thing. Right. You gotta right. go out of the state in two days because it's right. gonna happen. I don't like meat. Well, there's meat on this domino you asking me to order. You devil, if you don't sit down, you don't starve. That's, right. that's what my parents are doing right now. That. That's how they raised me. That's yeah. how I'm doing it too. Right. I'm gonna say it one more time so I can finish this text. If you don't pray, don't worry. I was like, well, you still haven't exactly gotten what my point was because I was smart enough to have a paramedics out back and they prayed with us. <laughs> you ain't sleeping. At what point are we going to begin to trust the Father? Right. That's the reason why miracles have left the body of Christ. Right. That's the reason why we run around speaking in tongues and don't interpret. Right. That's one of the reasons why the prayer line is out to the back. That's why we don't have it very rarely at this ministry. You can stand there and we pray over everybody and if you believe the same thing happened that having me come and touch you with my polo on. Right. Y'all get quiet in there. You can see that it's polo. It's saying it in big words. You know, I'm just trying to show up. <laughs> Lay your hands on me. Just stand right there and believe me. I love you just the same from a distance. I'm challenging your faith. We got prayer lines all the way. I know what the Bible says. I'm a Bible scholar. I'm sitting back up to me. Y'all shouldn't be here in town with my mother. I actually serve at places uh, in some way I'm getting ready to get in trouble where everybody who said they called with the word ain't called with the word. Why are you there if people don't know the Bible? Somebody testified in the Bible said and the pastors and the elders say they does. Let me move on. Really know what I'm talking about? I'm not going to get in trouble by myself. <laughs> <laughs> Did you speak to that mountain? I'm almost done. Now, Gospel of Mark, chapter 11, verse 22 through 24. It states, because he specializes in things that seem impossible, Jesus answering them said unto them, Have faith in God, for verily I say that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, and he shall have whatsoever he saith. Beloved, the gist of this brief but powerful encouragement, I didn't think it was that brief, this morning is for every chosen believer to understand the strategic position that the Most High places all of his chosen elect in. Chosen elect. He's not strategic with everyone. You can't expect all of y'all to lead and share this message with folk that simply call that haven't responded to their call and he's strategic in their lives. He's not strategic in everyone's life and circumstance. Do y'all hear me today? He said that all things work together for the good of those who are the called according to his purpose. So that's the problem with us seeking everybody to give comment on our situation. They can't relate Vanessa because everybody he's not being strategic in their steps. Some folk y'all on the job with Joe they ain't got no business being there. And they ain't doing nothing to cause y'all trouble. We got to stay overnight because, you know, you can't do the job right. Everybody, he's not operating strategic with it. Some people serve as those mountains in our situation. They ain't got no business there, and they shouldn't be there. And if they were obedient in their own regard, they would be somewhere else. But we interpret difficult situations as somehow that we're out of pocket when no matter what situation you're in when you're elected of the most high, he can turn danger into destiny. Yes. Oh. Wow. 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 The gist is to understand that every elected believer he has placed you in strategic position for the purposes of the world seeing and recognizing listen, his power and might that he may get the glory out of our life and outcomes. He'll set up a storm. Aaron, he'll cause a fire just so that he can rush and put it out. 
And we can say if it wasn't for the glory of the Most High, I would have been consumed in these flames. I wonder if anybody blood washed yeah. today. That should have yeah. resonated yeah. with somebody. I'm telling you that it may not feel good for the season, right. but he does stuff like that just so he can get the glory. My God. And rather than complain, we need to familiarize ourselves with how the Holy Spirit works on our behalf. Right. Right. Yes. I placed you in a particular circumstance. The Bible says, when his son called out to him, asking why have you forsaken me, the prophecy on it, the word on it thousands of years before was that it pleased the Lord to see his son bruised. He didn't say like we do. All right, I'm ordering down with him right now. Just shut up, child. When he saw his son going through with what the purpose was to save his most treasured creation, it actually pleased the father. He didn't take him off that cross. He didn't send them legions of angels to come and rescue him. It appeared as though he forsook him until he gave up the ghost and the veil of the temple was ring. And then he went and took the keys of death and the grave from the accuser of the brother and then rose up again and declared to them, all power has been given to me in the heavens and the earth. And lo, I'll be with you always, even until the end of the age. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Somebody ought to be encouraged. There's actually great purpose to that seemingly impossible circumstance that you're facing. I'm not even attempting to motivate you. My name ain't Tony Robbins. My name is Solaire Man Jr. Much as I'm encouraging you to trust in the word that has been left on the record for our life, I'm closing. Scripture states in Revelations chapter 22, verses 10 and 11 in LT. For example, it has come at last. They were declaring salvation and power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ. For the accuser of our brothers and sisters has been thrown down to earth, the one who accuses them before our God day and night. And they have defeated him by listening to the blood of the Lamb and by their testimony. They did not love their lives so much that they were afraid to die. Wow. I'm going to repeat that. And then we're going to ask Mr. Billy to give us something so that we can ask y'all to stand and close. Mama Woman, once again, this is at least the third out of our fourth scenario today that we mentioned. How he fought and won on our behalf without us lifting a hand. Right. They overcame by the testimony and by the blood of the Lamb. How y'all gonna overcome the stuff that you face in the way that you fight it? Right, right. I thought you said this was gonna be an encouraging word. It is, because yeah. I'm telling you, you don't have to fight it. Yeah. Everything you're going through is strategic. You just gotta trust it. Everything you're going through is strategic. You just gotta obey what's in the word. Everything you're going through is strategic. You just got to realize that he puts us in these positions sometimes so that when we come out, ain't nobody blessing anybody but him. I'm going to say this. In Gideon's scenario, thousands of people gathered together when the Most High called him to be a judge to fight to press back the opposition of the Midianites who were some of the most dastardly examples of the people that all of the judges in the book of Judges had to face that oppressed Israel. Midian had one of the most formidable armies, for example. So thousands of Israelites, when they found their judge in Gideon, gathered to fight. You know what the most I told Gideon, Joe? He said, send the people home. Gideon was like, the armies of Midian are in the tens of thousands. He said, if I deliver the hand of Israel with these many people, y'all don't think y'all did it. Well, oh, somebody has been excited about the word. Yeah. If I free y'all from the bondage of the Midianites with this many people, right. y'all don't try to give y'all self credit. Right. You need to understand that it was I. Right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to send 300 people to fight tens of thousands. Right. Right. And y'all going to overcome now, nobody would good six. Even the children would believe, yeah, I took on a thousand by myself. No, they're going to have to give glory yeah, to the ancient yeah, of days because it's nothing yeah. but by the power of the I am that we overcame those Midianites. I want to repeat, we only had a couple of hundred people and they were ignorant at that. Yeah. They were un 
undisciplined. Come on, my woman. man. They, they were not precise. They were not educated in the stoop. The Most High said, look, everybody lay out napkins and gather their utensils, Vanessa, together and pour the water safely. Send them home. The people that's lapping up water and desperate, those are the people you want to take in the battle mission. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. My God. Ladies, I told, I know in pre prior messages and said, don't come out and ask me anything. But sometimes when your hair look crazy, the God for the Lord can use you to bed. <laughs> I don't mean to contradict the past message, but sometimes, brother, when your high waters is high water, the Lord can use you because you didn't take out time to consider vanity before you went into that believing that he was going to bring you out. Sometimes you ain't got time to prepare. Give me something. You see, beloved, our almighty creator specializes in warfare tactics that are unconventional to our carnal way of doing things and understanding things. The Lord don't go on X, formerly Twitter, right. and then in so many sentences in one paragraph tell out our enemies right. and try to dox them in public. The Lord ain't got to do that. I can't name the number of instances in my own life when I doubted my deliverance at the very moment that I should have been trusted the Father. When you are chosen by the Most High God, your perfect story actually is a perfect opportunity for the Almighty to show his might and authority. Now the term strategic in the English lexicon is an adjective describing something that is carefully designed or planned to serve a particular purpose or advantage. He has thought a lot about your trouble. He has thought painstakingly and is very precise with regards to the particular plight that you're suffering right now. If no one knows better, which is the reason why you don't have to continue to repeat, was the reason why you don't have to waste prayer. He understands the position that you're in. Yes, there is a specific purpose and reason why you survived to this point. Now that's what y'all need to think about. We want to think about our wounds, Aaron, when a lot of times we're not grateful enough about out of all the things that I can talk about, Lady Joy, all the accidents and the near misses that we've been through, how am I still here? That's when our mind needs to start shifting towards the strategic purpose of the Father in our lives because after all that I've been through, how did we make it this far about? There's a reason why you're still here. There's a specific reason and purpose why you haven't completely lost your entire mind in all the struggles that you faced. It's not all initially negative also, though. Watch this. There's a reason and purpose for all of his mercy shown to you all, despite your many instances of overwhelming doubt. Mark, how many times did we fail to believe that he was going to come through? Only for him to ignore our doubt and come through anyway. I'm telling y'all, beloved, he's strategic. Stand on your feet. There's a reason and specific purpose for your many opportunities and promotions throughout life when you full and well know that someone else was better qualified for the position he placed you in. Yet he placed you in that position. Yeah, sometimes affirmative action ain't the issue. Sometimes you know you don't belong there. <laughs> and the Heavenly Father places you there anyway. Opens up that door anyway. You know you weren't grateful for the last thing and he continues to provide. He's strategic, beloved. I'm closing. I'm here to tell you today that we serve a strategic father. There is no longer any need to worry or wonder. Our good sister visited over with us today. If I never see you again, darling, it was strategic that you heard this word. He knew years ago that a moment was going to come particularly in our lives. I don't know you, and I'm not trying to put you on the spot, but he knows even when we're strangers to one another what we need to hear and confirmations that we need to understand. I don't have to have it correlated in my thought or I don't need or seek approval or, or for someone to even say, yeah, you're 
white minister, and even if y'all were like, well, there's nothing particularly going on in my life, I'm blessed. I'm gonna tell you, before the week ends, possibly before the year ends, he's gonna confirm that the word of each and every one of us, not just the visiting sister, but the word that came to each and every one of us today, that it was necessary. Yes. Because it's a part of his plan, even when it's not a part of ours. What did he say in Matthew 6? Take no thought for your life. What ye shall eat, or what ye shall drink. We quote it, and then all we do is worry. Mm. Come on. <laughs> Don't regret. Don't regret the last blessing that he bestowed upon you. My old man, he makes some of us. I'm not throwing off on you. I'm a homeowner. You're a homeowner. Some of us are homeowners. We get the first mortgage bill. And we stress, Chris, we worry. Why are we begrudging the blessings and the doors that he let us walk through? Trust him that he's going to pay every payment of every gift that he gave you. Every bit of the lifeline and story of his chosen elect is a set up for the success of us knowing of his kingdom here on earth. Why has he always made a way when there appeared to be none? I'll tell you why. You may currently be depressed, even y'all online watching this, by thoughts instigated by the accuser of the brother of himself. I told y'all this was a depressing time of the year. Silver man. But why when you look back over your life and you think things over, despite of being depressed sometimes, that we can truly say that we've been blessed? I'm going to tell you why, because you've got a testimony that the devil wants you to forget. Because if you remember your testimony, you'll square your shoulders and you throw your head in the air and you'll tell that devil that I serve a God that has proven already in my life if he doesn't if he doesn't do another thing, he's already proven that nothing is too hard for him. Yes. Beloved, we serve a strategic almighty God. So we need not doubt. We need not fear. We need not worry. Oh, he already understands that despite, because I'm a realistic pastor, that despite how encouraging his silence, it's an excellent chance 90% of y'all are going to worry again. You're going to doubt again. You're going to stammer and you're going to stumble again. But the thing that's awesome, and I'm going to pray and close, is he's already accounted for that in the future. Wow. Because he's strategic with his grace. Yes, my God. My God. Oh, if you believe that, put your blessed hands together and give God praise. We bow heads, Heavenly Father, I'm asking right now. Where everyone stands today, where everyone is around this country and around the globe that's going to either see this live later or watching it right now. Heavenly Father, we seek forgiveness. We'll never be remiss to ask in any sermon for the immense doubt and for the failure to account for the, your word that you left on record so that we'll know that there is a purpose and a plan for everything everything that you do and everything that you call us to accomplish. Yes. I'm declaring today, Father, that everything that we hope for is already done. We just need to pull it out of the air. So forgive us, Heavenly Father, for doubting. We believe that that forgiveness is by everyone that believes because of the powerful sacrifice of your son that came and died for us, the Hamashiach, but didn't stay there, rose again, and didn't just rise, but ascended to you, Heavenly Father, where he's right now sitting on your right hand, making intercession for, on behalf of each and every one of us that believe. Save us, Heavenly Father. Save us. Which the original Greek term is sozo, so in Romans 10 to 9, that means that you rescue us and preserve us until such a time that you return to us, that we might live with you in infinite time. Give us the strength and the power and the resiliency each and every one of us today, to stand in the strategic position that you place us in because, Lord, you're with us always, even to the end of the age. And greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. We believe it right now, and we don't doubt you, and we give you honor and praise. 
Ask these blessings and many more in your great name. Come on, bless it once again. Put me in F. Well, we need to stand on this. We need to be encouraged by this. We're going to ask each and every one of you all, join us every Wednesday. We'll be back. If you've got questions, if you need biblical insight, if you've gone places and you've been to studies and they can't seem to bring you to the fulfillment of what you're seeking out of the word, this is what we do at Exactly True Ministry. We don't say it back to those The Most High answers prayer and he gives us insight with regards to the exegetical and hermeneutical insight that is in this word. And we uh, approach it and arrive at it together. So join us every Wednesday at 7 p.m. to 8.30. We'll be online next week, but the following week we'll be back in person with a very, very powerful word closing out 2023, giving us insight. We already have the word. It's a powerful word for your life. I'm not going to miss it on the 30th. Giving us insight and laying out the schematics for our ministry for and what we should expect as the body of Christ. 2024. We praise the most high for worship. We praise the most high for prayer. Listen, don't doubt. I ain't telling you don't call the ambulance. But what we need to do is we need to stop doubting the power of the ancient of days, the most high. All power is in his hands. Won't you trust him for once? We like to close with a song. Remember to pray for me. We're closing. We're going on. That I might go in peace and continue to keep in the depth of the song. It's my prayer for one another. That I might go in spirit. Keep my name on your lips. And when you pray, that I need you to cover cover me cover me look at somebody standing next to you and to continue to pray for me because I need to pray listen and I find you in peace oh my continue to keep feeling dead if the pastor pray that I might go in spirit and keep my name on your mind when you go to God next time cause I need you yes to cover cover me